Jack Dorsey retook the CEO post at Twitter more than a week ago. And today, the company announced it plans to lay off 8% of its workforce of more than 330 people. In an email to employees, Dorsey said the cuts were tough but necessary decisions that enable Twitter to move with greater focus. Our tech panel is here. Opportunity lives. Carrie Shetfield. Fox News headlines 24-7 anchor Brett Larson and contentedly Joe Lazowskis. Great to have you all here. So I am going to start with you, Kate. What is your take on Twitter? Is this the sign of getting the company back on track or is this the sign the first domino to really fall? I, I think it's the latter, just because if you look at who the cuts, who are being cut, from what we can tell, it's going to be engineering talent. Right now, it's 50-50 Which is business. like, that's like cutting the muscle, right? Exactly. Not that's how I see it. And they're trying to spin it and say, oh, we're going to be more lean with our engineers. That, that's why we need fewer. I actually think they're kind of spinning their wheels here by cutting engineering as opposed to the business. I have not heard one company say, we want to be lean with our engineers. Right. Yeah, those are usually the last people to go. That's like... That's like getting rid of the guy who knows how to plug stuff in at your company. <laughs> yeah. Or the person who knows how to answer the phones and the phone's ringing and everyone's like, does anybody know how to do this? <laughs> I mean, that's like, those aren't the people you, unless so you're going to outsource it, but no, then cannot, it's like risky. Does this just scream cash crunch to you? I don't know. To play devil's advocate. Yeah, they, let's do it. They've gone from 2,000 employees 15 months ago to 4,100 today. Um, that's a lot of growth really fast. And you can get bloated as a tech company. It can get harder to get new features through. So I don't know. I could see this actually working out as they roll out a lot more mainstream features. Okay, more mainstream features. You were going to say something? No, I agree. That was like a 25% increase over a year. So I, you could argue, oh, that's his predecessor's fault. He's just cleaning up his mess. But there's just more and more competition in this whole streaming space. I mean, we even just yeah. heard from Snapchat today saying, oh, you know what? We're not even right. going to do original content anymore. So obviously there's pressures coming from somewhere. Well, I think a lot of these new media companies are getting into this content space and realizing, wow, this content thing is not easy. It requires like good people. It requires it requires good content and money. And it's not just, oh, turn the camera on and it's free. It's like, no, that's that's how you get people to watch like a cat getting stuck in a ceiling fan. <laughs> but that doesn't happen every day. If you want to do consistently good content. Right, like, speaking of advanced engineering and yeah, cats and ceiling fans. The cats and ceiling fans. Tesla rolling out its new autopilot feature. Brett, I have to ask you because you're beyond happy about this. I am so excited about this. I am a huge believer in driverless cars. I think the way Elon Musk is going to do this is, is the right way to do it. It's this, look, you've already got the car. We're going to put a couple safe features in here. The car's going to help you get home. I, this is, we need to take baby steps into the driverless car. And I think this is the best way to do it because you're also not talking about no offense to Tesla in any way, but you're not talking about a Ford or a GM. You're talking about sort of a niche product that has a very, uh, so he's trying not to say Joe base. that basically rich people are buying this. It's a luxury <laughs> product. <laughs> yeah, yeah, basically. Well, what's really cool about Tesla is that you know, this update is happening wirelessly. So they're just updating the software of the car. Suddenly there are new features. Just like an iPad, right? Yeah, like yeah. eventually like our, cars are, go wrong. our cars are just going to be like iPads or iPhones. And Tesla, as a Silicon Valley company, probably has a big advantage moving forward in attracting the kind of engineers, you know, maybe some laid off by Twitter to help right. build this next generation. Okay, and of sometimes technology. Apple. Do you remember that story yeah. last week where Elon Musk said, oh, it's okay that some of our engineers leave and work at Apple? That's the graveyard <laughs> for basically the people we don't right. want anymore. Right. And yeah. then tweeted out later, no, well, I'm just kidding. I love Apple. I'm glad they're doing an electric Elon's vehicle. never been known for his humility. So, yeah. all right, fair or point. Or his personality. If you saw the interview that he did with Colbert, it's like, wow. Actually, but that's okay. Really <laughs> like, you know, it's he's a, I know he's a good guy, but like a lot of those guys are just like, eh, I developed it in a car. I get it. I get it. I work with <laughs> these people. I'm not trying to be mean. I'm just saying like, well, well, hey, they're, they're the most their, dynamic. Like, no, you're right. We want them for their engineering talent, exactly, not for their exactly. TV personality. And for <laughs> nuking Mars. We're gonna and for nuking Mars. 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 We're going to nuke yeah, Mars. Yeah, I hope Matt Damon gets away from it. on dry. All right. So Facebook has big plans, wants to take over the world. That's my editorial version. But basically taking on Google, taking on Apple, saying essentially with this messaging platform, it can do what it wants. I'm a little skeptical. I almost feel like it's going to go into the turf in the same way that Google Plus tried to go onto <laughs> Facebook's turf. That hasn't caught on at all. The reason is, in terms of corporate America, if they're thinking they're going to use this for Skype Which or that's messaging, what it seems like. I'm, I'm skeptical having worked on Wall Street. So the big firms, they block Facebook. So I worked yeah. at Goldman Sachs. I worked at Moody's. You can't even go to Facebook.com. So I'm worried. I, I don't know if it's going to catch on. I'm a little skeptical. Mark but, Zuckerberg's you know. going to have to go personally visit 
at Lloyd Blank yes. and say, all right, and sell China and Goldman. Right. Right. Yes. <laughs> no, I, I agree. I agree. I mean, they sort of had to force people into getting the messaging app when yes. they rolled it out of the Facebook app on right. mobile devices. Very obnoxious. It really it's, was. It's it, you had things. no choice. You yes. had to use it. All right, it. Joe, you're but, the devil's advocate today. But, yeah. <laughs> at, but at the same time, it worked. They went from 300 million users with the Messenger app to 700 million today. And you look at the way chat apps are used in China. Like, it's not just messaging each other. It's everything. It's Uber. It's seamless. It's, you know, the way you do your banking. The entire Internet exists on chat app platforms in, you know, the other parts of the world. So there's a huge potential for that to happen well, that is here. exactly their argument. It's like one-stop shopping, where your home page, where your mobile page, and you can do everything you need to do, including work. Joe Lazowskis, thank you very much. Brett Larson and Carrie Shetfield, great to have you all here.